RUR. RUR is a 1920 science fiction play by the Czech writer Karl Čapek. RUR stands for Rossum Ovi Universal Ni Robotai, Rossum's Universal Robots. However, the English phrase Rossum's Universal Robots had been used as the subtitle in the Czech original. It premiered on January 25, 1921 and introduced the word robot to the English language and to science fiction as a whole. RUR quickly became famous and was influential early in the history of its publication. By 1923, it had been translated into 30 languages. The play begins in a factory that makes artificial people, called robotai, robots, from synthetic organic matter. They are not exactly robots by the current definition of the term, they are living flesh and blood creatures rather than machinery and are closer to the modern idea of androids or replicants. They may be mistaken for humans and can think for themselves. They seem happy to work for humans at first, but a robot rebellion leads to the extinction of the human race. Chopek later took a different approach to the same theme in War with the Newts, in which non-humans become a servant class in human society. RUR is dark but not without hope, and was successful in its day in both Europe and North America. Parentheses indicate differences in translations. Helena, the daughter of the president of a major industrial power, arrives at the island factory of Rossum's Universal Robots. She meets Stolman, the general manager of RUR, who tells her the history of the company. In 1920, a man named Rossum came to the island to study marine biology, and in 1932 he accidentally discovered a chemical that behaved exactly like protoplasm, except that it did not mind being knocked around. Rossum attempted to make a dog and a man, but failed. His nephew came to see him, and the two argued non-stop, largely because old Rossum only wanted to create animals to prove that not only was God unnecessary but that there was no God at all, and young Rossum only wanted to make himself rich. Eventually, young Rossum locked his uncle in a laboratory to play with his monsters and mutants, while young Rossum built factories and cranked out robots by the thousands. By the time the play takes place, around the year 2000, robots are cheap and available all over the world. They have become absolutely necessary because they allow products to be made at a fifth of previous cost. Helena meets Fabry, Dr. Gall, Alquist, Busman, and Halima Ear and reveals she is a representative of the League of Humanity, a human rights organization that wishes to free the robots. The managers of the factory find this a ridiculous proposition, since they see robots as appliances. Helena requests that the robots be paid so that they can buy things they like, but the robots do not like anything. Helena is eventually convinced that the League of Humanity is a waste of money, but continues to argue on the fact that robots should still have a soul. Later, Doman confesses that he loves Helena and forces her into an engagement. Ten years later, Helena and her nurse Nana are talking about current events, particularly the decline in human births. Helena and Doman reminisce about the day they met and summarize the last ten years of world history, which has been shaped by the new worldwide robot-based economy. Helena meets Dr. Gall's new robot experiment, Radius, and Dr. Gall describes his experimental robotis, robot Helena. Both are more advanced fully featured versions. In secret, Helena burns the formula required to create robots. The revolt of the robots reaches Rossum's Island as the act ends. The characters sense that the very universality of the robots presents a danger. Reminiscent of the Tower of Babel, the characters discuss whether creating national robots who were unable to communicate beyond their language group would have been a good idea. As robot forces lay siege to the factory, Helena reveals she has burned the formula necessary to make new robots. The characters lament the end of humanity and defend their actions, despite the fact that their imminent deaths are a direct result of those actions. Busman is killed attempting to negotiate a peace with the robots, who then storm the factory and kill all the humans except for Alquist, the company's chief engineer, whom the robots spare because they recognize that Horks with his hands like the robots. Years have passed and almost all humans had been killed by the robot revolution except for Alquist. He has been attempting to recreate the formula that Helena destroyed, although as he is a mechanical engineer with insufficient knowledge of biological chemistry he has made little progress. The robot government has attempted to search for surviving humans to help Alquist but they have not been able to find any. Officials from the robot government approach Alquist in first order and then beg him to complete the formula even if it means he will have to kill and dissect other robots to do so. Alquist yields, agreeing to kill and dissect, which completes the circle of violence begun in Act 2. Alquist is disgusted by it. Robots Primus and Helena develop human feelings and fall in love. 
Playing a hunch, Alquis threatens to dissect Primus and then Helena, each begs him to take him or herself and spare the other. Alquis realizes that they are the new Adam and Eve, and gives charge of the world to them. The robots described in Chopex play are not robots in the popularly understood sense of an automaton. They are not mechanical devices, but rather artificial biological organisms that may be mistaken for humans. A comic scene at the beginning of the play shows Helena arguing with her future husband, Harry Doman, because she cannot believe his secretary is a robotus. Poem Doman, Sulla, let Miss Glory have a look at you. Helena, stands and offers her hand, pleased to meet you. It must be very hard for you out here, cut off from the rest of the world. Sulla, I do not know the rest of the world Miss Glory. Please sit down. Helena, sits, where are you from? Sulla, from here, the factory. Helena, oh, you were born here. Sulla, yes I was made here. Helena, startled, what? Doman, laughing, Sulla isn't a person, Miss Glory, she's a robot. Helena, oh, please forgive me. Less than slash poem. In a limited sense, they resemble more modern conceptions of man-made life forms, such as the replicants in Blade Runner, the hosts in the Westworld TV series and the humanoid Cylons in the reimagined Battlestar Galactica, but in Chopek's time there was no conception of modern genetic engineering, DNA's role in heredity was not confirmed until 1952. There are descriptions of kneading troughs for robot skin, great vets for liver and brains, and a factory for producing bones. Nerve fibers, arteries, and intestines are spun on factory bobbins, while the robots themselves are assembled like automobiles. Chopex robots are living biological beings, but they are still assembled, as opposed to grown or born. One critic has described Chopex robots as epitomizing the traumatic transformation of modern society by the First World War and the Fordist assembly line. The play introduced the word robot, which displaced older words such as automaton or android in languages around the world. In an article in Ladove Novini, Karl Chopek named his brother Joseph as the true inventor of the word. In Czech, robota means forced labor of the kind that serfs had to perform on their master's lands and is derived from rab, meaning slave. The name Rosam is an allusion to the Czech word rosem, meaning reason, wisdom, intellect, or common sense. It has been suggested that the illusion might be preserved by translating Rossum as reason but only the major slash porter version translates the word as reason. The work was published in Prague by Eventnum in 1920 and premiered in that city on January 25, 1921. It was translated from Czech into English by Paul Selvera and adapted for the English stage by Nigel Playfair in 1923. Selvera's translation abridged the play and eliminated a character, a robot named Damon. In April 1923 Basil Dean produced RUR for the Riandian Company at St. Martin's Theatre, London. The American premiere was at the Garrick Theatre in New York City in October 1922, where it ran for 184 performances, a production in which Spencer Tresai and Pat O'Brien played robots in their Broadway debuts. It also played in Chicago and Los Angeles during 1923. In the late 1930s, the play was staged in the U.S. by the Federal Theater Project's Marionette Theatre in New York. In 1989, a new, unabridged translation by Claudia Novak Jones restored the elements of the play eliminated by Selver. Another unabridged translation was produced by Peter Major and Kathy Porter for Methuen Drama in 1999. Reviewing the New York production of RUR, the Forum magazine described the play as thought provoking and a highly original thriller. John Clude has lauded RUR as a play of exorbitant wit and almost demonic energy and lists the play as one of the classic titles of interwar science fiction. Luciano Floridi has described the play thus, philosophically rich and controversial, RUR was unanimously acknowledged as a masterpiece from its first appearance, and has become a classic of technologically dystopian literature. Yarka Amperian called RUR a theatrically effective, prototypal sci-fi melodrama. On the other hand, Isaac Asimov, author of the Robot series of books and creator of the Three Laws of Robotics, stated, Chopek's play is, in my own opinion, a terribly bad one, but it is immortal for that one word. It contributed the word robot not only to English but, through English, to all the languages in which science fiction is now written. In fact, Asimov's laws of robotics are specifically and explicitly designed to prevent the kind-off situation depicted in RUR- since Asimov's robots are created with a built-in total inhibition against harming human beings or disobeying them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.